second half is Chris Childers. He looks preoccupied. 
Why don't we get a little with the shovel stuff? It's inevitable. Somehow you can't pull yourself together, which makes it difficult to notice the things going on around you. Or maybe he hasn't woken up yet. There's a fog in his head, and it hasn't even cleared. But I'm certain that I know him. And this isn't any of that somehow or another about now either. He's pulled out a chair and placed his other stuff bag on it. He's fumbling through his pockets. He keeps an eye on the tea urns. One tea, he says, holding up a finger. He doesn't look in my direction. He doesn't look anywhere, actually. He's lost inside himself. Well, well, he might say, if he plants over and see me. It's you. Or maybe all the places. He takes a magazine and some book type things from his bag and sets them on the table. He has some different colored journals, too. Or at least I'm assuming that's what they are. It's obvious from his face how lost in thought he is. Whatever the matter, it seems like a real can of worms. One should be able to observe to oneself now and then, because I'm sure that if he knew he looked so out of sorts to the rest of us, he would straighten up, glance around, and see the world for what it is. Once he looks, he'll see. These encounters, after so many years, could be so sweet. You feel like you're walking on air. With the chance meeting, those days you thought you'd lost, or those sights you'd forgotten suddenly blaze up in your memory as if it all happened yesterday. Now he's flipping through his magazine and books. It's easier to play someone when you've seen each other recently. There's none of that wrestling with time. Otherwise, he grabs you by the arm and plays you to the other side of the world, all while you've just been trying to get through the day, never just even asking yourself who or where you are. Sometimes you get through the day, sometimes you don't. He peers into the bottom of his empty bag. He can't seem to find what he's looking at. It's hard, my friend. With the way things stand, it's hard. You have to find yourself first before searching for something else, whatever it is. And even then, it should only be one thing. How does the Russian proverb go? Chase two rabbits, and you catch me with one? You got it? This tea arrives. I know the waiter, so I really raise my voice to draw attention to myself. Hey, stop, I call. Another tea for me, too. I must have spoken too loudly, because two kids walking up the street look at me and laugh. I can have some sort of tea withdrawal. What a small prize, mind your own damn business. Right away, my son says. The waiter is a good kid. He's in high school, trying away. He gives you a little talkative, but he knows how to work. What else can he do? Raising my voice didn't get his attention. It's the way he's sitting. Anyway, he finally found what he was looking for in the front pocket of his bag, or I guess that's what it was. It's always in some ridiculous thing like a notebook that would report life's odds and ends. And so he wrote, he drew, he scribbled. As he bent over to write something else, I saw the top of his head. With respect to his hair, he lost it all. Which means, however you looked at it, it been at least 20 years since we'd seen each other. Say what you will, no matter how much time goes by, no matter how much a so-called man lets himself go to pot, there's always one thing left over that doesn't change, himself. He stopped setting another tea down in front of me. He cut me off before I could say anything. The other one got cold, he said. Moving a chair, he leaned in closer. Professor, he said under his breath. Do you know that man sitting over there? Which man? I said indifferently. I looked left and right, as if I didn't know who he was talking about. He gestured with his head. He seen me watching him closely, which is why he asked. How would I know him, I said. He leaned in a little closer. I can't really say, the other whisper. It looks a lot like you. It's about those strange little plans that I could not 
beauty finds my soul. Pity and mercy with their gentle eyes wake in my heart a hope that cannot be. What law, what destiny, what foul control, what cruelty or late or soon denies that death should spare perfection so complete? 